Can buildings and cities become intelligent? I'm going to take you through a journey of ideas corresponding to responsive intelligence. Hold on to your seats. <laughs> the next image would tell you, would, would not need an introduction. You know where I'm coming from. As architects, we tend to design for the visual impact. We fail to design for other senses. Urban noise is a huge threat for the future. Look at how a car honking invades our public spaces. Look at how particles which are not visible invade our public spaces. Look at how it explodes. Urban noise is a threat for the future, but right now, at this moment, we have to start designing spaces which are responsive. So understanding this, we created prototypes which helped us to understand how human perceives sound. They, it, it's subjective. Each one reacts to sound in a different way. So we created these models and we tested sound. How can sound create architecture? And the end research was that. It was about how architecture can curb and adapt to urban noise. <coughs> Here you see a public space in India which records real-time data from traffic and can curb and adapt, not just urban noise. <coughs> Talking about global warming, air pollution causes 7 million to 9 million deaths every year. But how can an architect address this? How can, how can we address this issue? Yeah, you read that right. A facade can clean the city. Imagine your facades in your house, your elevation can clean the city. This facade is being coated with titanium dioxide on steel plates, which can remove 97% of smog. So this facade is a photocatalyst. It works with just UV radiation from sunlight. It converts toxic nitrogen dioxide to soluble nitrates, which become non-toxic at the end of the day. This links architecture to the community. This changes the way we start designing spaces. We give back value to the community. It becomes an overall public space. Here, the material is the protagonist. One step further, how can we program matter? How can we embed intelligence into matter? Thanks to EAC, and IIT Italy, with graphene, the wonder material invented a few years back, we were able to create a hypersensitive membrane which is ultra thin, flexible, and translucent. And this membrane can send and receive information. And that's the research team behind this. Look at how a user can interact with your built envelope. Your building material and your information layer becomes one. There are no more bricks, there are no more wire, wire, wires like data cables in, your, in, your, in architecture. It all becomes one layer. Imagine how architectural elements can become user interfaces. How can architecture respond to nature? A research team happily interacting with the prototype. The next prototype is about proximity. You don't have to touch it. It senses, your, it senses your proximity to the membrane. We can program this to receive weather data, traffic. Imagine you want to know about traffic in Vienna. We can program that. This opens a whole new scenario of working spaces where you won't have static walls. You would have responsive, intelligent walls in your houses. But that's not the end vision of it. We're talking about neighborhoods where we can transfer energy. We're standing here in Fuchs Theater. Imagine the energy conserved by the photovoltaic cells can be transferred to the building next to it. Just like Islam said about supercapacitors. This is possible with graphene. Of course, climate change is real. I agree with Caprio. <laughs> but how do we address this problem? 
there's a concept of passive architecture where we start designing climate responsive buildings, we start informing the buildings well before we build it, thanks to Technalia EAG in Barcelona, with the help of robotics, with the help of future digital fabrication, we were able to create a dialogue between material intelligence and digital fabrication. Here you see a geometry born out of data. This geometry can block your summer sun and allow your winter sun. This saves around 60% of energy of running costs in your building. A zero carbon footprint project where clay is extracted from earth, mixed it with water, and right away we start 3D printing. With uh, data collected from environment and robotic fabrication helps us to create geometries understanding the nature. It starts to become a design responsive to climate. The happy team after we assemble the prototype. <laughs> it's not theory. It's not about execution. But how do we test this? How do we test how does this respond to nature? So we have created this climatic box which can simulate from 10 degrees temperature to 40 degrees Celsius over a period of time. So we understand and test how the prototype works and visually see with a the thermal camera how the thermal performance of this prototype is. And structurally, but not just buildings. <coughs> we live in cities which are static. We live in neighborhoods which don't respond to public flow. Coincidentally, with Sasi School of Architecture in India, we are working on a research project where we are creating a responsive urban core. This responsive urban core is an urban catalyst to other nodes and neighborhoods. So you see how a neighborhood can, is transforming with public flow over weekends and in evenings. Thanks to Sharif and Rajdeepan for this amazing project where we are creating autonomous solar pods and pedestrianized streets where solar powered pods take over the city, where robots coexist with us. It, buildings can start cleaning cities and public spaces can adapt and expand to the user flow. We are talking about a future which is definitely intelligent cities and responsive buildings and streets. If you guys want to be a part of this change or learn more about it, you can connect us at A plus R, our website. Thank you.